Welcome to my Rayman 3 fan remake devlog series. I invite you to join me as I talk about my journey of learning Unreal Engine and programming. I will go over how I made this blank scene turn into this. Come on, I'm kidding. Hey, I like that outfit on you. When does it come off? I'll be showing the models I've made, C++ code, and blueprint code. All right, let's dive in. Hello, welcome to the first episode of this series, and I guess to the beginning of my channel. If you haven't seen the channel introduction yet, I recommend watching it. It's not necessary to understand what's going on in this video, but it gives you some kind of insight into why I started this whole project in the first place. Anyway, in this video, I want to go over some first steps I took when starting this project. So the first 3D models I made, the skybox and stuff like that. All right, let's roll the clips. So instead of working on this level as a whole, I want to start with this island first. That's because I'm still looking for the art style that I'm going for. And once I have this island in a pretty much ready state, it will act as a guide for all the other assets that I'm going to make for this level. I chose this island in particular because it has the grass texture and the rock texture which make up most of this level actually. It's pretty flat so it has a lot of opportunity to lay out some foliage which, I, which is going to also be a huge part of the level and it also has a little structure here in the middle. So it has more going for it than being just a little boring piece of terrain. Alright, let's hop into Unreal Engine. So I started with making a skybox by using the built-in BP Sky Sphere and tweak some settings to make it look like the skybox in the original game. So basically a dark sky with a pinkish horizon. Then I added a fog. For the lake, I just added a plane and gave it a mirror-like material by just cranking up the metallic to, to one and having it almost have no roughness. Very simple, but it's good enough for now. For anyone wondering why I didn't use the built-in Unreal Engine sky system, I just decided it doesn't fit the art style that I'm going for as this is pretty realistic in my opinion and I'm going for something much more stylized. So now I'm ready to start working on the island itself. I want to get hold of the original game models as they will speed up the process of making my own and help me with placement and scale in Unreal Engine. Luckily, somebody already ported all the game models into Unreal Engine. If you haven't heard of Lumen Engine, go check it out. Uh, so I took the scenes from Lumen Engine and imported them into Blender. So I took the island into ZBrush to have it as a base for sculpting. I guess that's done. The model has around 200 million points, so I'll reduce it to around 600k. And it's time to drop it into the Unreal. So here's how I want to make the material. Since this is a nanite mesh, I have much more vertices than I would normally have. And that means that I can bake in the curvature and cavity information into the model itself through vertex color. So let me show you what I mean in ZBrush. Here I have the regular model and when I turn on vertex color, uh, you see it looks something like this. Everything that's black, I want it to have a regular tileable rocky texture that I will make later on. The red parts will be edge highlights so it will be the rocky texture but brighter and the same for green except darker because they're going to be the cavities and the blue parts will simply be a mossy texture. For the rocky texture I first sculpted the normal map in ZBrush and then painted the rest in Substance Painter. I did the same for the mossy texture. After connecting everything in the material editor here's what I got. I think the vertex painting I done to highlight the edges and cavities do a lot of the heavy lifting since when I turn them off. In my opinion, it just makes the rock look much more flat and much more generic. I also gave some more controls in my material instance, like the texture size. I can change the global roughness if I want. I can give a tint to the rock. Um, I can change the contrast of my cavities, uh, actually my edges. 
can change the color of just the cavities or change the roughness of just my cavities or edges. Uh, I also opted for triplanar mapping. It makes sense for environment pieces that don't move and also I don't have to unwrap these nanite meshes which is a big pain. By the way, Unreal Engine already has a node that handles triplanar mapping, so there wasn't much work with that. It's called World Aligned Texture. You can easily change the texture size as well as change the transition contrast, so how the different planes blend together. There's also a triplanar node for normal maps called World Aligned Normal. Moving on to the door in the middle of the island, I imported the original model as a base and started sculpting again. Alright, now I needed to make the tileable textures for the well, tiles on the sides. I again made a normal map in ZBrush and finished it all off in Substance Painter. Once I had my tiles, I moved on to the boulder in the middle. Because of the painting of the fairy council, I decided to make a dedicated texture for this one. And there we have it, our beautiful door. The material for the tiles is very simple. The tiles are UV based, but I added a dirt overlay that is triplanar just to help me add some visual breakup or avoid repetition. Okay, next step, foliage. So I sculpted all the leaves in ZBrush and combined them into actual plants in Blender. I did optimize the leaves a little bit, but not too much because I'm going to use Nanite for the foliage as well. Then to finish it all off, I put all the leaves on one UV map and painted them all in Painter. And this is how it looks. For anyone wondering, that was 20 different plants. In the material graph, for the shading model, I'm using a two-sided foliage so the leaves can have translucency. So for the wind, I use a sine function to move the leaves left and right while using a cosine function to move them up and down. I use vertex painting for masking again. Anything that's black doesn't get affected by the wind at all. Everything in red moves left and right while everything in green moves up and down. Then I painted every leaf with a different alpha value so I can offset the movement per leaf so they don't all move the same way in like in unison. Then I added a global noise and a panner to move it around so the strength of the wind is random at any given moment. Here I kind of visualized for you the global noise movement on the foliage. I hope you can see how this panner is sliding this texture around. So basically the brighter the color is, the stronger the wind movement is for the plants that are located at, at those bright spots. So now if I plug in the color back in, you can see how over time the wind intensity changes. So I painted the island with foliage and here's the effects. As you can see, I updated the rock shader a little bit. I added a dirt texture that I can paint in using the vertex alpha channel. Let's enjoy some nature together. We should wrap this up now. Okay, first one down, hopefully many more to come. I know I've been going pretty quickly over some stuff, but I'm still searching for that sweet spot between over explaining stuff that I've done and not explaining it enough. Hopefully that's something I can improve as more videos come out. In the next one, I'm going to go over basic player movement. So if you're interested in that, perhaps subscribe. Anyway, if you had a good time here, please leave a like under the video and I wish you a very good day. Goodbye.